Hello everyone, uh, this is Chris Hallmark, and uh, we're getting ready to start our ASL talk show here um, with Ella May Lintz. She's going to join us today, so be patient while we get this set up. All right, thank you. Hi, uh, Cassandra. <laughs> Glad you could join us. I'm waiting for Ella to join us. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, I've been uh, talking with Ella through a text message. Uh, so we're trying to get this uh, Facebook Live going so she can join us, okay? Waiting patiently. Hello, Anna, nice of you to join us. And Jadalyn. Okay, just be patient while we get this set up, waiting for Ella to join us. Thank you. Hi, Krista. Nice of you to join us. Krista. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm getting all set up, waiting for you here. Oh, yes, it's good to see you. Okay, I think I got it set. Great. Nice of you to join us, Ella. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself um, so people know who you are. Awesome. I am Ella Lentz. Uh, this is my name sign here you know, on the forehead, side of the forehead. And, well, um, I've been involved in ASL, uh, deaf culture, uh, deaf hood, um, just many different... Uh, theater, uh, all these different things, a lot of discussions, a lot of activities. I'm, I'm very much an activist, a professor, um, a host. You have many hats, apparently. <laughs> I don't have a hat on now, though. <laughs> well, I'm happy that uh, you could join with us today and, and uh, see what's going on and the deaf community can watch and learn at the same time. And those who are deaf, who are not deaf, can watch as well. And, um, see how interesting this will be. Uh, you're from California, correct? Yes, I am in the Bay Area in California. I am Chris Hallmark, and uh, I'm running for Kansas House of Representatives for District 15 here in Kansas, um, where I'm from, and I'm thrilled to have this discussion here today. So, awesome. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on being officially a candidate. It's going to be an exciting job. Thank you very much on this end. And uh, my first question, obviously, is a simple question that many deaf people looking on as a deaf person running for an office. Um, how do you think that if a deaf person actually gets into a political office, how will it impact the deaf community? What's your perspective on that? Oh, it, it would definitely have an impact on it. It would, I mean, obviously it depends on, uh, on that person, but what I visualize is, you know, an experienced deaf person would have a huge impact on this. Uh, it's important that they continue to learn about themselves, what it's like to be a deaf person, um, you know, and how to fit in with the hearing world in a healthy way, have a good rapport, how to work together, that type of thing. And if the person, you know, keeps doing this and keeps learning about themselves, of course, of course, they need to go for something like that. Do you think that I'm that person? 
I think you are. <laughs> I've seen you. I've seen how you are. I've seen how you've been willing to learn and open yourself up and uh, how uh, you, you've taken in all these experiences you've had all along. Absolutely. Um, from what I've seen before, <laughs> you used to make me shake my head, but uh, sometimes you say things and I, I used to say things and I'm like, ooh, that doesn't look good as a deaf person. But again, again, each of us is on our own journey. And every one of us has to keep learning and keep pressing on and check that and unpack that. You know what that word means, unpack. Everyone has to unpack and we also have to unpack as well. And what that means as a deaf person or working with a deaf person or whatever that means in a healthy way. And I've noticed that that's what you've been doing. Um, yeah, really, really, really motivated to unpack yourself and learn about yourself and it's been very inspiring and it's inspired a lot of hope. And I've seen that in your journey. So through your journey um, into a political office, um, yeah, absolutely. You've shown that you are working hard to really understand mm -hmm. the constituents and the people who are voting for you. Plus, I, you know, I, I, I can identify with you. People can identify with you. And that's a serious responsibility that you have to take on. And I'm super impressed with that. I really am. Thank you very much for believing in me. Wow. <laughs> uh, that means a lot, it does. Um, no, I gotta re rethink now. Okay. Um, let me talk about what you just saw. Remember, I would say two or three weeks ago, uh, we had met for the first time in Denver, Colorado for the EHDI um, convention and asked you to come and join us. And you were super excited to be there and, and, and thrilled. And, um, you know, you're a good politician. You wanted to go, you wanted to be supportive, but at the same time you wanted to learn. And I could see that you were learning while you were there. And, you know, I could see that you were campaigning as well. And I could see that you really wanted to join our Transform EDH, uh, EHDI group. Uh, on Saturday night, uh, we had a vigil. We had Sage and we joined in with you and we talked about seeing you and how exciting it was and watching you and learning from you. And then Sunday, that all, all day, you, you joined our uh, conference. Uh, there were five different speakers and you sat and watched and you learned and you processed, which was great. And also then Saturday, the Saturday night before, um, we as a group uh, had planned a meeting uh, to meet with Carl White who is the one in charge of the EDHI group in that meeting and set everything up. And um, he has contacts and networks all across the 50 states with information about EHDI and that type of thing. And Carl uh, is very good at diverting. He has a very much a medical viewpoint of deafness and we needed help resolving that. I mean, he's very strongly opinionated and with him and, and other people from from his group and other programs who are involved in EHDI. Um, and so we asked Chris Yu uh, to moderate uh, the meeting and Carl did not want that. He didn't want a moderator. Um, and there was a lot of tension between the two groups and I was just very impressed with how you handled it. You kept it cool. You supported us and our group and what we asked of you. Um, and at the same time, you kept everything diplomatic um, you, you kept a, a good conversation with Carl uh, and Carl was kind of thrown off balance by that. And you could tell um, that Carl started to you know, basically give control to you. And I was super impressed with how you handled that. And then also how you shared your experience at the same time and how, you know, it, you know, it, you weren't opposed to what they were saying but you could explain it. And it was just a very good understanding. Um, I was super impressed with it. And then Sunday, and then come Monday, I was especially press, impressed that day with you. Cause I remember Monday, um, we had planned uh, for some deaf students um, from Colorado School for the Deaf um, to go to, I think there was eight or nine students, uh, plus uh, three of their staff that were going with them. And you led them through the Capitol, from, well, from the hotel um, that right where we had the meeting and we walked to the state capitol and um, uh, then we met you there. We met also another legislator there uh, from the state. Um, I believe her name was Leslie, uh, interpreter Miss Sydney. Um, so we sat down with the group and talked to her and, and when we were done, we, we talked about the election and 
disability issues and, and, and talked and it was just a nice commingling of, of discussion and, um, and, and how you were very strong in the grassroots and that lady. So it was nice to see that correlation and this group, um, when they were done talking with Jesse there, um, then we sat and talked with you and you kind of explained uh, about politics, what it looks like, and just watching them sit there and, and, and grasp and take this all in. It was just very nice to see that. It was very inspiring that these students had this opportunity uh, to see this person who's involved in politics and watching it work. And it's just, it's, it's just important. And I just thank you for, for you know, that event in Denver and being part of that event. Um, and I'm really, I was really thrilled to be involved with that. And, um, you know, it was very special to me because it was one of my first real experiences where I finally got to be involved, um, uh, involved with making changes and impacts and trying to shift the focus from, from one way to another in, in, in this. And my favorite part was with the students, like you said, I loved it when they became, when they started reacting and asking questions and getting ideas and, you know, were asking me for questions. It was just, it was very enlightening and it just made me feel really good. When I left, I just, I, I told my friend, I said, that was just awesome. That feeling, it was just a goosebump moment, um, you know, where you have, uh, you know, this is somebody in America that the deaf children need, and I'm ready to take on that responsibility. And I thank you very much for everything, everything you just explained, and really for everything. <laughs> well, thank you too. And um, also remember that in the political process, um, you know, I took several classes a long time ago. Um, Christine uh, Poloni or Pelosi, um, Pelosi, sorry, um, and she's from California. Uh, her daughter taught a class here and I took it. And um, I believe it was called Camping Boot Camp. Campaign Boot Camp, excuse me, interpreter made a mistake. Um, it, it was for, you know, if you wanted to be part of a nonprofit group or you wanted to be in an office, and it was four Mondays in a row that this class was. And um, she shared with us, I shared with the students, and uh, it was very important the things that we picked up on in those four, four Monday nights that we took this class. Um, you know, that you have to have a team, you have to have a manager, um, you have to have people who are responsible for different things and making sure everything goes smoothly. Um, you have to envision things and figure out things and how to set things up and people and every part of your team and all these different areas. And something I learned also the finance portion, fundraising um, is important, um, which, which you have, you've been trying to fund. Um, you know, we, we did a small fundraiser for you there in Denver. How much did we earn that night? I think that night was about a thousand dollars. Awesome. That, that's pretty good then. Um, and then the following Monday uh, was the message you know, what message you want to portray to everybody and show everyone, show your character, that type of thing. And I've seen that uh, yours is, you've been working on your message and trying to figure out how to make that message and looking at your experience. And the last one was uh, mobilize or immobilize, however you want to call it, or mobilization. You know, getting people out to vote, getting people, getting your support, uh, events, that type of thing. And so I see all four of these components come up in your campaign. Of course, I don't know everything, I'm not involved, but I can imagine that all these four things are part of your campaign and I wanna learn from and see what your experience is. And I picked up a lot of those skills uh, when I was exposed to different state legislatures uh, when, when I was involved in before too. So um, one more question. Um, I'm facing uh, some difficulties with the deaf community to try to get their trust. I was wondering if you had any advice for me on how I could earn their trust uh, to get involved in our campaign and believe in, in our capability and what we can do and at the same time donate. Um, I make vlogs every day. I have a lot of positive comments. What's your advice? First and foremost, if you don't mind me expounding on it a little bit, one of the problems, um, you know, where do they live? Are, are, are we talking the 15th district? Are we talking outside of that? Can you explain your, your question a little more? Some of the comments I typically see are that, you know, it's not possible for a deaf person to win, that a deaf person is not going to win the vote. The second one is money. Money's hard to raise. Fundraising is hard. It's hard to convince hearing people to believe in a campaign like this. And some think that me, Chris Hallmark, 
Um, I have a big job in the state and that, and, and trying to win that election is just too big. I'm um, starting too small, uh, that I need to start maybe at city level or work with somebody who might be hearing to win the election and work underneath them in an office to learn. Um, and, and then a fourth, um, just not trusting me. Uh, you know, I may be a scam. We've had other people in, in this community that have done that and that have scammed people for money and that type of thing. You know, and, and there are laws that pr protect um, campaign finance. I can't use it for personal. I can't do that. I can't break any laws when it comes to money. And people are still obsessed with that I'm a scam or I'm scamming people and they don't want to donate money. Okay, those are four questions all in one. <laughs> Hopefully I can remember them. Uh, the first question being, what was the first question? The first one was related to the ability to win an election. Okay. Um, can you win an election? Again, if you really applied um, the four M's uh, that, I, that I spoke of uh, from the classes I took, and if you're willing to change, improve, and get better and have the right attitude, and you really unpack yourselves and you have this team that's working well and you're taking feedback and you're getting ideas and you're getting support, there's nothing that can stop you really. There's nothing. I mean, people have to vote and, and we'll know the result from the vote itself. But mm -hmm. honestly, I mean, if you lost or if you won, that doesn't matter to me. It's the experience. And, 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 and you should gain from that and, and learn for the next time. And a deaf person, um, really a deaf person, it, it is a challenge for hearing people really. Um, people might be more likely, um, you know, to say, oh, a deaf person could do this, but would they truly be able to understand our needs and at the same time stand up for his own uh, deaf constituents or, uh, or, or the people in his district? And, and, and I see no reason why people would be reluctant to that. Uh, but again, it depends on, on how you message and, and what message you put out there for yourself. Um, yes, it can. It is absolutely possible. Uh, hopefully I answered that question. Yes, you answered it perfectly. Okay, the second one, money. Money. Oh, yes, it is expensive. And I understand that, um, what, you can get up to 20000 Is that what it is? No, I want to get over $20,000 uh, for state. My goal is above $20,000 for this district. Is there any limitation? The only... The only in limitation is up to a $500 donation per person from a business or a personal. And if you own a business, you can do personal and business. Um, but I mean, I can raise up to any amount of money that I want to, but my goal is 20,000 or above for the campaign. Why did you pick 20,000? Uh, uh, most likely that's what state races tend to be 10 to $50,000 depending. I would feel comfortable at a $20,000 level. Um, it still would be a bonus if I outraised the $20,000. So obviously um, you're, you've done your homework, you know, you're figuring out the minimum that you need, and I believe what you say, I do. $20,000 is very reasonable, very reasonable and absolutely possible. If each, I, I, I mean, you have a, a new campaign, uh, you have the 15 times 15 times 15, um, what, and 8,000 houses, uh, on the federal campaign, or, uh, there's 8,000, sorry, we had a mix up here. Um, sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you were talking about House of Representatives. Uh, here uh, in the houses, yes, there's about 8,000 houses here in the district. Um, about 8,000. Okay, say um, each one donated $20, $20. I mean, that would be $160,000. <laughs> that's $160,000. I mean, that's just $20. I mean, so that's not bad. I mean, some people it might be a challenge for, you know, $20 shouldn't be all that tough. To get. I mean, if they believed in you, I mean, you know, even if half of them, I mean, but still you're talking $80,000. That's really not that difficult. Then you have people outside of the district like me. I'm in California. I donated $100, say. And if people keep donating from outside of the, outside of the area, this is not going to be difficult. So, I mean, if you, if you just frame it for them that you can do this, I don't see a problem with that. And I want to add something to that. 
uh, I'm in a unique situation because many candidates here typically ask their friends and family first uh, for their donations and then they shift to uh, find people they work with, that type of thing. And my unique situation is because I'm asking the deaf community because they are my family. Exactly, that's beautiful. And so I'm asking them and starting with them so that I can raise the money. But at the same time, I want it to look like, yeah, I, wanted to, I want people to know that I represent them. And when I go into this house and I work there, I don't want the personal legislature to say, remember, uh, I, I, I want to say the hearing people, I don't want to say the hearing people put me in here. I wanted to say the deaf people put me in here because I represent them. I think I, I think you made a really good point there, Chris. Um, your family. I love that idea of the family, that this is your family and you start with your base, what we call your base, yes. Um, not the voters, but your base, the people who know you, the people who believe in you, live with you, uh, who socialize with you. Those are the people who know you, and I think it's super important that they donate to you. It doesn't matter if they live in your district. They don't have to live in your district. And then you can be more motivated to work for the people in your district. I think that's a great, a great concept. And I think it's a challenge <coughs> and I think we need to be challenged by it, but we can do that. Like uh, I just saw a movie, um, Do Do Dolores, um, the woman who uh, walked around with Cesar Chavez uh, in California uh, during the, the great, I believe it was in the 1970s or something like this. Uh, it could be the 60s, 1960s, somewhere around in there, 1960s. Yes, the 1960s, okay, in California. And that woman walked around with him, and uh, he, he basically forgot she was still there, but she was, she, he lived till he was 87. Uh, but the movie is a documentary about her, and her famous quote is, Sai you, okay, okay, it's C, sorry for yes, uh, we, Bude? I'm not spelling it right. It means can. But yes, we can. Yes, we can is the quote they use. And he gave a lot of speeches uh, uh, during his campaign from people, uh, from, you know, walking arms together and uniting together and trying to make a change and getting people employed and supporting health insurance and all these wonderful things. And, you know, from the people who worked on the farm. And it was just one of those kind of movies that just gives you goosebumps. You know, it made me think about Obama because Obama took some from that and it was just very impressive. So I just wanted to give you that tidbit that yes, you can. And yes, we can. Yes, we can. Sure. <laughs> okay. I like that. I like that a lot. That gave me goosebumps now. Um, uh, third question. Uh, I'm going to modify the question a bit. Um, some deaf um, who... Uh, might be resistant to donating because they feel that uh, here I'm in Kansas and this campaign, if I win the election, it's going to have no effect on deaf people in another state. Uh, how do you respond to something like that? Um, you know, you mentioned some people thought you should start smaller. Um, state level is, is a moderate. It's not small, but it's not big by any means. And I think that's a good starting point. And because uh, the unfortunate thing is maybe only, uh, you might be the only deaf person running for an elected office in the United States. I'm not. Um, there is, right now there are four um, that are, are running. They haven't won any elections. Um, uh, a Democrat or Republican. We have uh, one that just this last fall, Neil McDevitt, uh, he ran for mayor in Pennsylvania. He lost by seven votes. Uh, oh, wow. Unfortunate, yes. Um, he ran, but he didn't win. Uh, we have another lady in California who's now the mayor. Yes, that's correct. Um, but I can't remember. I think it's Amanda. Her last name starts with an F. She became the mayor through a congressional, uh, through a um, council, excuse me, um, through a council vote, not through an elected position. And they decided to vote for her there. Um, but she's the highest ranking deaf person right there for mayor in a California city, a small California city. Um, this would be the first time uh, anybody who signs and is a deaf person 
in history would win at a state level. So this campaign would make history. Okay, so that level is a challenge, but at the same time, it's reasonable. And I think that you are gonna make a huge impact. And, uh, you know, the interest in Kansas, it's, it's smack in the heart of, of, of the United States. It's just a stone's throw away. <laughs> but you can, just this one little stone can make a huge ripple effect across the nation. And uh, it might be in Kansas, but being the first elected at a state level will make a huge ripple effect across the nation. And again, it depends on how you deal with the different issues and how you handle your death base and how you handle your district constituents and their needs and the people and political issues there. Mm -hmm. But if you learn like I've been doing and you do well, the impact and, and, and just how many people will be watching this district 15 in Kansas, it is something that is a, gonna be global. It's a global thing and people are truly gonna be watching this all over the country. There are gonna be deaf people that are gonna to wanna to be elected in other places just because of this. So, and it's long overdue here in America. Another election, uh, there's uh, another one, you, whoa. Um, the interpreter missed that, sorry. Um, there's South Africa, there's other countries that have them, sorry, that's his point was that there are other countries that have uh, deaf elected people. And Ella says, yes, we absolutely need more. Chris, uh, last question, and I'm a scammer. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know what advice do you have for, for deaf people who think that I'm here to get their money to use it for personal gain. The important thing is if a person thinks you're a scammer, they need to do their homework. They need to check into, you know, this politician, uh, the regulations surrounding fundraising, that type of thing. It's not you. There are other candidates too who who are, are doing okay who or and others who haven't. I mean, there are many hearing people who have messed things up as well with their money. So they just need to do their homework and then look at you and your situation and how you're doing it. Uh, from what I've seen, you don't have anything to worry about. You have nothing to worry about. <laughs> you have absolutely nothing to worry about. So um, just um, be accountable um, with the people's money. Uh, and I, I believe, you know, they have regulations, very strict regulations uh, that up to $500 each, um, all those things. So, you know, the regulations, you'll, uh, I'm fine with you. Yeah. And, and, and all my spending is an open record for everyone to see and look at everything that I've spent on every single expense is looked at. That's the law. And anyone can check into that. Yep. It's on Kansas ethics commission, uh, website. Um, it's open for anyone and all candidates that are on there for any office uh, that they're running for. Everyone's is on there. We have to do reports, how much is earned, who the names are, how it's spent, that type of thing. Um, um, you know, salaries, everything, every expense, every, everything is notated on the website it has to be, that's the regulation. If I don't, I get fined or I face jail time. So it's a serious offense. So yeah, you would lose your position too, exactly. So yes, um, okay. So what you're saying then is when we talk about a salary uh, for yourself or for other people who work for you, for the team, for the team. Typically there are some who do get paid a salary. Um, some people get paid uh, con consulting firms, um, you know, for their staff and that type of thing. All of mine right now, all of mine are volunteers. I haven't paid anyone a salary or anything on my team. They're all volunteers. Most expenses are on printing, equipment, um, and making improvements for us to be able to make the campaign work. So out of curiosity, um, when people vote and you go into work, do you actually earn a salary if you were elected, say you're a senator or a legislator or whatever, um, even at the state level? Uh, so the government pays you for your job. Uh, in Congress, the pay is $179,000 a year salary. In Kansas, the state legislator, state legislator is one of the lowest in America. And I, I don't really care about the salary myself. I'm more focused on making a big impact 
um, to set a positive narrative uh, for the deaf people at the same time to make my experience better. And then after two years in the state, maybe I can, I can switch over to Congress and run for that, who knows. Um, but the salary here is, it is terrible. But still, you, you will be able to work full time as a representative for Kansas. Um, like you need some kind of financial support to live, that type of thing. I'm sure the state will give you some kind of money or something like that. Is that correct? Okay. I don't know how that works. Yeah, in a way, yes. Many of our legislators have a second job. Um, because it's not a year-round job as a legislator. It's only when they're in session um, and when they're open. So that could be three months out of the year. It can be delayed depending on how hot an issue is and how it's being resolved, if it's less of a hot issue. Um, so a lot of the other legislators already have their second jobs. I do feel like I will have to get a second job after I win the election. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I, I'm trying to use my free time to meet a, as many constituents as I can and do as much as I can to get the voters right now. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, you're helping me learn something new. Thank you so much. It varies state by state, uh, but here in Kansas, it's, it's very low pay. Awesome. Um, I was thinking if you have any other concerns or anything or did, any more questions, let me think of other questions. Um, I don't, I haven't seen anybody ask any questions. I've been trying to watch the discussion, but uh, I think you've answered all of my questions. Um, uh, I designed a new, uh, I'm designing a new website right now. It's not out yet. Uh, for now we have change15.com. Uh, that's where people can go and make a donation there change15.com and at the same time uh, when the website's done um, it'll be change15.com as well and they'll be ready and show everyone the full website the links and everything how to donate and all that will be on there but for now and just encouraging everyone every deaf person every person on here to donate you're my family please support me make this possible so that I can get all the people here in our district out to vote and vote for me this is super important to replace or to change District 15. That's where Change 15, the representative we have now is uh, Erin Davis. Um, she just recently replaced, um, she was the deciding vote in an important bill. The person that she replaced was a Republican who was planning on voting against this bill. Um, and the chairperson replaced him with her and uh, she voted in support of the bill to break a tie on purpose. So um, I don't feel like she's representing me uh, because the bill was to actually change our Kansas constitution to remove um, the Supreme Court's uh, checks and balances on the legislators in regards to school funding. So now there's no checks and balances in place. The court had decided that the legislators need to push for a bill to be passed to raise the amount of money per child in Kansas and the public school system. And it just so happened that the group of Republicans were not happy with that decision, that the court was forcing them to increase the budget. So they were trying to change the constitution, use my representative to break the tie to change the constitution. And that's horrible. She's a lobbyist. Um, um, she works for a company um, in Washington. Um, and when people have asked her, isn't that a conflict of interest? She said that the lobbying company doesn't affect Kansas, so that her position doesn't have any effect on Kansas, but she is a lobbyist. All of her money comes from a lot of businesses, especially in 2016. A lot of the people who uh, have told me uh, about her that she doesn't go to a lot of doors, she doesn't meet a lot of people, um, she's not looking for, she didn't look for a lot of votes in 2016, but this year's going to be different. I feel like uh, I'm really pushing to get people exposed to sign language that deaf people can. Um, you know, I was, you know, through, through the world, I was the world traveler. And I feel like this is what I'm doing here, kind of going through this district and gaining all of that. And, and to make people, these hearing people more comfortable with the idea of a deaf person, like, oh, they're deaf, it's no big deal. Um, and then, yeah, and, 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 and it's in a light that right? 
Exactly. It's in Olathe. Yes, it's in Olathe. Oh, my goodness. You have the deaf school that's there in the town. You have that new museum for the deaf history that's there in town of arts and culture. I mean, it's, they've already had such good exposure to this already. And seeing you, people will already be familiar with the fact of deaf people. Plus, on the flip side, people then, um, you know, you guys can influence each other. I think that would be a great district to start in. This afternoon, I went to a third district forum. Uh, there, after it was done, I went to walk out, and one of the ladies came up to me and said, aren't you Chris Hallmark? Do you know of any deaf uh, tax preparers? Uh, because we might need one to work with a deaf person who showed up, and we don't know how to help her. You know, this year or next year, we want to be ready with a deaf, deaf tax preparer. And I told her, you know, that I will talk with the people I know, but she, you know, she's looking for a tax, tax preparer that's deaf. And that just it made me feel good to know that people are looking for something like this. That's great. And then for sure, hopefully, um, you know, there are several deaf tax preparers. I know some myself, but um, hopefully there are some. So that's great. Um, um, you talk uh, about meeting people. Uh, like that movie I saw that I talked about. I just saw it a couple of days ago. Um, the Dolores movie. Um, yes. No, 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 no. Um, her daughter, it was her daughter who gave a, a short speech after the movie. Um, Juanita was her name. Um, Vanez, or Valaz. Um, and she, uh, she had a strong belief that you really needed the face-to-face -face contact. And that is truly the best way um, to relate to people better than social media. And I said, absolutely, social media has its role, it does, but the best way is person to person, face to face. And so you're, what you're envisioning of going door to door, uh, that kind of grassroots movement, that type of thing is really good. And, you know, I really want to encourage people to mm -hmm. donate. I'm going to donate again. I already donated, but I'm going to donate again. And I appreciate that. Thank you. And I also wanted to tell the audience, if they don't know, um, since August of last year, I've been making a vlog every single day uh, in sign. It's captioned. Um, I actually have uh, English and Spanish. Um, I, I made it past two, the 240th uh, vlog, and I do it every single day. I'm going to end on 365 days. Um, and uh, I don't feel like giving up. I want to do that because I feel like, you know, it's going, it's working. I don't need I don't need to push it. It's already in motion and it's already moving. Uh, as well, um, my election uh, will be November eighth. Eighth. Mm. <laughs> November. It's the first week. It's the first Tuesday in November. <laughs> um, uh, there is no Democrat challenger at this moment for a primary. Um, there isn't any yet. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, but I'm going to continue the vlogs until August. And then um, once I hit that point, I don't know uh, any other candidate in America that's done anything like that. 365 days of even keeping in contact. So uh, this is very, very unique. And I just feel um, I've, I've already passed the halfway point. And I'm very proud of what I've done, of sharing my language and I encourage uh, deaf people to keep sharing their vlogs and their language and share my vlogs um, and share this vlog, share, share what we're doing right here as much as you can on any issue. Or if you see any issue you want me to talk about, let me know. I would love to open myself up and, and put into, into sign language and find information, do my homework and make a video on it. And so people will understand. I just did one about food deserts here in the district, which means in a certain area, there are no food stores within a certain mile radius. And so we have one here and I exposed that on my blog and people are surprised. Like they had no idea that this even happened. There are poor people in the 15th district and they're spending more for gas to drive to get food and bring it home than they should. Or if they don't even have a car, they have to pay for transportation. We don't have bus transportation a lot around here to get to a store. So it's a big struggle. And we have some um, churches and other supportive groups who are trying to provide food in the area. Uh, but that's just, that's just an example of what the 15th district is. It's a lower income district as a whole, even though Johnson County is typically more affluent. 
Uh, it's a very diverse population here. 40% uh, is non-white. Uh, we have uh, a Latino community uh, that loves me because I use a second language as well as they do. So that idea that we have similar struggles and language barriers, um, uh, you know, about getting interpreters and getting language access and getting volunteers or they're not qualified or there's uh, so many similarities with that. We have a black community here as well. Um, it's very diverse. And, and so my point being is that I feel like I can re represent them better than we have right now. And that's why I'm running. Uh, and I just want to thank you for joining us. Yes, that's a big responsibility. I want to thank you for joining us. Do you have any closing statements you want to say before we close this off? Um, uh, good luck, first and foremost. Good luck. I believe in you. I believe. I love your, I love your slogan. I believe. I believe in you. Thank you very much. And I love this discussion. And I'm happy. Um, that you finally got to do your very first Facebook mm -hmm. Live. <laughs> and hopefully you'll do more often uh, for other people and kind of have some open discussions so people can see this and, and, and have discussions like with, this with deaf people as they learn. Yes, now I know. I've always seen people do it with one. Now I see it with two screens. I mean, you will talk. That's nice. I didn't know how it works. And now you showed me. So I hopefully we see this more often. All right. Thank you so much for running, Chris. And thank you for in the shot. And I believe... And I'm just so glad you've unpacked yourself and you're growing and maturing. And I thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love you, Chris. Love you too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody, for watching this uh, and our discussion with Ella. Uh, very, very powerful. Uh, a very enlightening and emotional experience for me. And at the same time, uh, I feel like a Super Mario who's gotten that superstar power and I'm invincible now and I'm just ready to take on and get to work and take on the district and, and make it to the election and make history and give our people here what they need to change the 15th district and, and, and be a great representative in the state house. And so we just want to, I want to be a role model for all deaf people and deaf children. And I just encourage you to please get involved with our campaign make donations, you can go to www.change15.com. Um, so that's change15.com. Um, you can make $15 since it's District 15. That's where we came up with $15. But thank you. Thank you, everyone. You have a good night.